I am one for all and all for one. I feel the whole pulsing in me. I can, trembling in my body, I hear the voices of the trillions of unborn who look to our generation to be heroes. That's why we're doing the crossing in Europe. That's why we're doing the mystery school. That's why there's a center. That's why there's a one now to be heroes, right? We are the heroes of the future. This is a very, very, very important week in this time between worlds, in this time between stories. We're going to talk about the hero today, and David's going to read the code in a moment. And it, it it's one of our most important weeks. We're going to do the hero this week and, and next week and, and be the hero and become the hero. Because there's no way to respond to the meta crisis without the emergence of a new story of value A new story of value answers three questions. Where? Where am I? Who? Who am I? What? What ought be done? And we call these the three great questions of cosmoerotic humanism. The new story of value in response to the meta crisis. And we are here to be heroes for her majesty queen of the universe do you remember the three musketeers one for all and all for one and and all for france and france is the crown the queen and england walter scott for the queen to be a hero for Her Majesty Queen of the Universe. Malchut, the majesty of the Queen of the Universe. An old friend of mine, he likes to talk about us being secret agents for Her Majesty Queen of the Universe. Secret agents is the way he phrased it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Ohad. And it's beautiful. And to... To do that, we need to actually begin to understand what it means to be the hero, because to be the hero means something new. It's not the old version of the hero. It's not the old version of the hero for the crown. It means something new. To be a hero for Her Majesty Queen of the Universe, King of the Universe, King, Queen, Heros, Gamos, Line and Circle, we need to participate in royalty. We're not only the hero for the sake of royalty, for the sake of the vision, we become the vision. We become the royalty. Right? I actually become the queen. I become the king. And so we want to talk about how to evolve the source code and elicit the new hero. And, and this gets deep. Stay deep with me for a second. I can't feel welcome in the universe unless I'm a hero. Does everyone get that sentence? It's deep. Stay deep in with me. 
Do you get that, Becca? I can't be welcome in the universe unless I'm a hero. And it's okay and sometimes beautiful and necessary to critique each other. Sometimes we critique each other. That's okay, All right, beautiful. But we can never critique each other in a way that undermines our ability to evoke the hero in you. See, and I want you to get this distinction. It's so precise and so beautiful. There's a certain kind of critique that we can kind of hold. Why? Wow, you're, you're, you're giving me some important critique to, to help me be better. But there's another critique that has a withering effect. It's not, it, it's, it's not, it's the silent assassin of the anti-hero. There are no heroes. You're not a hero. I'm not a hero. There is no Her Majesty, right? There's no field of Eros. And I critique you in a way which is this kind of withering undermining of your capacity to be a hero. And sometimes friends do that to each other. Sometimes, excuse me, parents do that to their children. Sometimes children do it to their parents. Sometimes a teacher does it to students or, or students do it to a teacher. All of that is off limits. That's None of that's okay. Right? Any critique has to be in the context of welcoming you. And I can only welcome you if I can see you if I can love you madly and to love you is to see you with God's eyes, to be a lover is to see with God's eyes. And to see with God's eyes is to see that my significant other, whoever that significant other is, my beloved, whoever that beloved is in my circle of intimacy, my beloved is a hero. And when someone sees us as a hero, not in a bypass way, not in a superficial way. No, no, no. Actually, you're a hero. And you actually get, I, I'm actually being seen with God's eyes. Very few people know how to see us as a hero. And it's not a, I, I took a, um, New Age Seminar, and I studied Joseph Campbell, and I'm on the hero's journey, right? It's gotten overused. It, it, it's kind of stopped meaning something. Now, here's hero the fundamental category of reality itself. I'm not I unless I'm a hero. I'm not I unless I'm a hero. Does that make sense? There is no I without being a hero. Who I am in the most fundamental way is I'm a hero. And the emergence of the new human and the new humanity, this new story of value, which emerges in response to the meta crisis, a new human and a new humanity, that's homo amor. We call that homo amor, the new human and the new humanity. Homo amor, the human being who incarnates uniquely the eros of the universe and who's giving of unique gifts and living of unique presence, right? Which itself becomes a gift as an expression, an irreducibly unique expression of the field of Eros value. That's a hero. So homo amor is about the democratization of the hero, right? In other words, it used to be there were only a few heroes in service of Her Majesty, Queen of the Universe. And a few 007s, private heroes, and some Walter Scott public heroes, and some musketeers, 
mixture of public and private, the Musketeers. And Dumont's, Dumont's novel. But no, no. In order to respond to the meta crisis, we have to, have to actually do the only thing that ever responds and changes history is actually we have to tell a new story of value in which each one of us is a hero and we have different roles. We have diff different instruments to play in the unique self symphony and we're all heroes. And then we form together. The unique self symphony itself is, is the ultimate hero. We have a name for the unique self symphony. We've named the hero. We've named the hero David J. Temple. I actually happen to have a book of his right here. Look at that, David J. Temple. There's a book by David J. Temple. It's a new book. And David J. Temple is, is, is a pseudo-anonymous name, and it's the unique self symphony itself. The hero. And I'm only welcome in the universe if I'm a hero. You know, it's it's very, very hard, you know. I I just to share between us in this this, you know, intimate setting, and it, it truly is an intimate setting. It's a place where, with permission, if I can say everyone, I I feel at home. I love feedback. Feedback's important. One of the things I, I've actually said in the Unique Self Symphony is that, right, and I function in, a, in many roles, but one of them is a teacher role. I want feedback, always. But there's a distinction between two different kinds of feedback, right? And, 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 I, and I give feedback and sometimes sharp feedback. And I always want to hold that distinction on my side as well, which is I always want to give feedback that makes you more of a hero. Does everyone get that? I now want to receive feedback that we were we first we recognize each other as hero. Let me share with you how you can be more of a hero. Right, Zora? That's what you and I were talking about, right? It's just like, 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 yes. I can't be welcome in the universe unless I experience reality profoundly needing me. I'm needed to save the day. And sometimes I'm actually a secret agent. 007 never gets disclosed, right? 007 is always operating behind the scenes. So sometimes I'm supposed to be, sometimes I'm in 007 mode, right? Does that make sense? Sometimes I'm 007. James Bond or Jane Bond, right? It's James's sister, Jane Bond, right? She doesn't just have to be James's love interest. She can be Jane Bond and we like her. Who's up for Jane Bond? Anyone up for Jane Bond? Jane Bond it is, okay? All right, oh my God, Jane Bond. All right, Jane Bond, here we go. Okay, Jane Bond. And sometimes my job is to be the three musketeers. Does everyone get that? Right, who are kind of, and sometimes my job is to be a public hero it depends what part of the incarnation and which incarnation, right? But but it's about being a hero. And fundamentally, the people that love me know that I'm a hero. Now, I've got to actually be that. That's what it means to become home all more, right? We're, we're talking about, we're going to be doing an event in a, in a few weeks called The Crossing. And I named it The Crossing after a hero named Ibrahim, Abraham. Abraham crosses over to the other side. He becomes the ultimate antecedent founder of Islam, Christianity, right? Hebrew wisdom. He moves to the East also, his students. But he's a hero because he crosses to the other side, right? He crosses to the other side. Let's cross to the other side, right? Aston Martin, absolutely. And I cross the other side because... The way I cross the other side is I begin to experience myself as a hero. And I want to just, just if, can, we, can we hold that, right? Can we hold that? It's so crazy deep. And David's about to read our code, okay? So this is just the introduction. David's going to read the code and we're going to start and we're going to, let's go deep into the hero. But the beginning is, it's a revisioning of self, right? But it's not, 
it's not a intellectual cognitive restructuring. How do I actually experience myself? Right? So, so I want to, again, this is, this is the last intimate sharing and I'm going to turn to David. Right? Right? I experience myself as a hero. So I want you to notice the reaction to that. So our first reaction to that is, just notice everybody, even if we love each other and I'm home and I hope you love me and I love you and we love each other. Nonetheless, our first reaction to that is psychological. Huh. I wish he could do some psychological work to kind of deal with that grandiosity. Otto Rank talks about about this, one of the inner players in Freud's inner circle, right? No, no, wrong, 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 and wrong again. Don't reduce the grandness of the hero to a superficial, reductive, materialist grandiosity. The artist experiences his or herself as a hero. And I've got to paint this canvas. I've got to write this verse, right? I've got to, and I might be wherever the canvas, uh, the tapestry of my artistry might be, in whatever form it might be. But when I experience myself as an artist, I experience myself as a hero. I experience the urgency of my creativity. I experience that it's ultimately valuable, that it matters, that I lay it down for it, that I stand for it with everything that I have, my heart, body, and soul. And I, I have this sense of this ecstatic urgency. The artist is the hero. The hero is the foreshadowing of homo amor. And it's one of the reasons that in modernity and late modernity, and then in post-modernity, when the human being thought that he and she were stepping out of the field of value, that they continued to revere art, not just love art, to revere art. Because the, uh, the artist is still the hero, we, or we revered the sports figure. Because we were, and, and then we did Marvel Comics, right? We started with Superman with a bunch of kids from the lineage of Solomon kind of doing the Superman thing in Cleveland, Ohio in the 30s. We, we kind of understood that was still modernity. But then even as post-modernity explodes in the mid-90s, ah, right? There's this, this glimmering of the hero. See, when you step out of the field of value, you go to destroy the hero. That's why post-modernity said there are no heroes. Post-modernity is the great destruction of the hero. Post-modernity problematized, in many ways correctly, the pre-modern and the modern hero, and then said there are no heroes. Heroism is a problem. It's It's... It's fundamentalists blowing themselves up as suicide bombers. Yes, yes, of course, there's a problematized hero. And of course, we need to move from the pre-tragic hero to the tragic and recognize, right, the potential tragic in the hero. But then we move to the post-tragic and we reclaim the hero, right? It's like, wow, that's how more and more. That's the democratization of the hero. And, and literally the first spiritual practice before any other spiritual practice. Number one, it's not two, it's not three, it's not four, it's number one. The very first and primary spiritual practice is I have to experience myself accurately as a hero. And I commit to being a hero. And that's the crossing. That's the crossing to the other side. I'm, I'm a hero, not a grandiose hero, but a hero a grand hero. And it's only in 
the true grandness, which is the truest index of my real situation, that I begin to feel welcome in the universe, right? Cha. So David, take us into our code. Take us into our code, my brother. What a crazy delight. So this here is, this is this week's evolutionary love code. There's no way to be filled with joy unless you are a hero. Heroes are real. Postmodernity problematized the hero. Postmodernity mocked the hero. Postmodernity said the hero is dangerous. Let's do away with the hero. Postmodernity was not entirely wrong. Heroes were dying for the wrong things. Heroes were covering up their vulnerability, which was far greater than mere kryptonite. We needed to complexify the hero. But now that we've complexified the hero, we have to reclaim the hero. In cosmoerotic humanism, we call this the post-tragic hero. Homo amor is the post-tragic hero. So I'll do it one more time here and just feel into the, our associations with this term, hero. There's no way to be filled with joy unless you are a hero. Heroes are real. Postmodernity problematized the hero. Postmodernity mocked the hero. Postmodernity said the hero is dangerous. Let's do away with the hero. Postmodernity was not entirely wrong. Heroes were dying for the wrong things. Heroes were covering up their vulnerability, which was far greater than mere kryptonite. We needed to complexify the hero. But now that we've complexified the hero, we have to reclaim the hero. In cosmoerotic humanism, we call this the post-tragic hero. Homo amor is the post-tragic hero. And I turn my word back to you, Dr. Mark. David, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just thank you. You know, thank you, David. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, Christina, just for your depth. And thank you, Jacqueline. Lilith, and thank you, Ujis, and thank you, you know, Jamie, and, you know, and the people that are directly holding this particular field of, of one mountain, and, you know, heroes, and we're all heroes. We're all heroes, but, but we have to choose to be the hero. It's such a beautiful code. So, do you remember, everyone, when we talked about Shervin, and in Shervin, wrote a song called Baroe. And maybe someone pronounce it for me, right? If I'm pronouncing it wrong, B-A-R-A-Y-E, Baroe, right? You know, which is this very, very beautiful song. And he just got sentenced to several years in prison for doing that song. And it 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 was in response to the terrible murder of a, a wonderful young woman right, in Iran, which set off this explosion of brutality in which young boys and, and, and many young girls, meaning high school age, were taken out, beaten, killed, abused, right, for opposing the fundamentalist version, right, of the hero, right, the pre-modern hero, right, who was the hero that had to deny their essential nature, had to deny their participation in the field of value. The hero who was the hero because they submitted to a larger field that wasn't truly a larger field. It was a larger field that contradicted right, the language of their body and the language of the heart and the language of their soul. But in submission to that, they were thought to be a hero, to a desecration of the hero. And so Shervin writes a song, and I want to play that song. We're going to do the original version of the song, right, with his words, right? And I want to just, he just, he's going to prison. We did several on mountains around his heroism, and I want to really just honor him and be with him, and I want to find a way to actually make contact with him. Right? He's a gorgeous man, and he's a hero who's going to prison for actually standing against the old version of the hero, right? He actually 
incarnates the hero. So I want to just take a moment and let's, I want to honor the hero together and just hear that song, right? And see the words right? and feel it together. توی کوچه رخصیدن برای ترسیدن به وقت بوسیدن برای خواهرم خواهرت خواهرامون برای تغییر مغز ها که پوسیدن برای شرمندگی برای بی پولی برای حسرت یک زندگی معمولی برای کودک زبال گرد و آرزوهاش برای این اقتصاد دستوری برای این هوای آلوده برای ولی از رو درختای فرسوده برای پیروز و اعتمال انقرازش برای سگهای بیگناه ممنوعه برای گریه های بیوقفه برای تصویر تکرار این لحظه برای چهره ای که میخنده برای دانش آموزا برای هاینده برای اجباری برای نخبه های زندانی برای کودکان هفتانی برای این همه برای غیر تکراری برای این همه شعار های تو خالی برای آوار خونه های پوشالی برای احساس آرامش برای خرشی پس از شبای طولانی برای غوث های حساب و بیخوابی برای مرد میهن آبادی برای دختری که آرزو داشت به سر بود برای زن زندگی آزادی برای آزادی just for a moment friends i want to let the dharma go and i want to just go and like let's right yeah he's going to jail for that song for several years right may he may he be able to leave jail alive and whole and healthy which is not obvious for that song okay masha amini who was killed for just standing in her feminine and we're going to play the song again but i want to ask us as we hear the song again right we're here not in wisdotainment, not in entertainment. We're coming together as unique self-symphony. And in order to bring down this next chapter in the story of value, we actually want to become the hero. We want to become the hero. So I'm going to play, we're going to play the song again, this time with, with, with subtitles in, in English played by Mansoor, it's a woman singing the song, right, Shervin's song, okay? Right. Now just stay close, friends, okay? Stay close, take care of the YouTube, my friend Christiane afterwards, we'll send it to you, we'll take care of that part afterwards. But now let's just be in it, we're, we're in practice, we're in mad, holy practice around the world. We are the hero, right? We're, we're coming together, we're linking hands. Heroes for her majesty, right? He is, right? Shervin is a hero for her mass majesty, queen of the universe. And I want to invite, you want to invite, we want to invite together to actually in this moment, not later, not tomorrow, not in 20 minutes from now, but just literally now, right? We're going to now make the transition. And the transition is, I am a hero. And Shahati, imagine what that means, or that actually I'm a hero. Then everything changes, doesn't it? Right, everything changes. Like literally, right, how I hold my anxiety and how I hold my pain. Isn't that true? Right? It's I actually I'm we're gonna we're gonna this is the crossing. The crossing is right now. We're crossing to the other side, but right? I'm gonna actually change my fundamental 
experience of who I am, not to a diluted grandiosity, but to an accurate grandeur, knowing my true nature. And my true nature is, I'm not merely separate from the whole. The experience of being separate from the whole is an optical delusion of consciousness. Einstein, Albert, he got that one right. I'm actually inseparable from the field, right? The field of the whole is seamless. Everything is connected to everything, meaning there's no separate self. There's nothing that's separate. But that field is not merely a field of awareness. It's a field of wholeness. Can you feel that? Read David Bohm's later writings on wholeness. That reality moves towards, it's one of the core qualities of eros is the yearning for wholeness. So the field is not merely a field of awareness. Awareness is but one predicate of the field. But the field is actually a field of wholeness. It's a field of eros. And one of the four core qualities of eros, its primary quality is wholeness. Nothing separate from anything, but it's a quivering, trembling, infinite, tender wholeness of which I'm an irreducibly unique, gorgeous expression. I am a whole of the whole that makes the whole more whole. I am a whole emergent from the whole that makes the whole more whole. So I am a whole who is part of the larger whole. I participate in the larger whole. And in realizing my own irreducibly unique wholeness, the field of the whole becomes more whole. That's a hero. That's Homo Amor, right? It's like, wow. Right? Baroe. So Baroe means for the sake of. Isn't that gorgeous? For the sake of. Right? I'm a hero. I experience myself as the hero. Right? Does that make sense, everyone? I experience myself as the hero. I am the hero. I experience myself as the hero. And then my wholeness makes it all more whole. You know, the, the original lineage word for hero is gibor. G-I-B-B-O-R. Gibor, if I would spell it in English. And gibor has two meanings. It means hero, and it also means arousal. Literally, the word means arousal. It's a particular quality. It's the line quality of arousal, the line quality of arousal that lives in all men and all women. Right? It's this, right, this, this, right? Ah, right? Right, this line quality of arousal. Because when I'm aroused, I'm the hero. Does everyone get that? It's why lovemaking, whether you're kissing your partner's shoulder or just looking in their eyes across the room, right? And whether it's a friend or a, right, or a, a right? It, there's, there's many ways to make love. We've exiled lovemaking to a very narrow field and it, it's got to look a very particular way to much, right? Reality is making love. When I'm, when I'm making love, and I'm aroused. When I'm aroused, I'm a hero. Does, does everyone feel that? And I actually get that what I'm doing is ultimately significant. I could be making love as I paint and as I write and as I, as I search for a document, as I organize a piece. Jamie, as you send me over right, a heart and I send you a heart back, my friend Jamie, right? Right, in other words, I'm writing an outrageous beautiful note, right, to the milkman, right, who I'm telling him I'm going to be away for four days, don't leave milk, but I, I add something to that note that makes it an outrageous love letter, because, and, and that the person feels recognized and seen, it's an outrageous love letter, right, in other words, it's a, right, so, so the experience of being aroused, I'm aroused, and when I'm aroused, I'm in the field, See, there is no local arousal. There's no local desire. It doesn't exist. All desire is non-local. I'm participating in the field of desire. I, I actually, in desire, 
even if it's completely unconscious, I'm experiencing the whole is moving through me and I experience the ultimate significance of my action, of my engagement. Do you know why people kill each other and, and destroy each other for the sake of passion, for the sake of relationships made and relationships broken? Because they're disconnected and alienated from the field of the whole because they don't feel like they're heroes any place in their lives. So the only place where they feel right, a glimmering of the aliveness of being a hero is in that one relationship. And, and if you don't relate to me in the way I want to relate to you right, forever, then I feel that I've lost access to the field and to being a hero and I'm going to kill you right, to cover up the emptiness. I'm gonna explode murderously to murder your eros because I've lost access to mine. No, 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 no. Actually, the word hero and the word arousal are the same is because the hero is omniconsiderate for the sake of the whole. The whole lives in the hero. Baroi, for the sake of the whole. Okay, so let's do it again. But this time I'm going to invite with permission, tenderly. We're going to keep the chat box open and we're just going to see if we can take the next step and we can just write, I am a hero, right? I am a hero, Baroi. I am a hero, Baroi. Take us inside. For dancing in the alleys and the streets, for the thrill and the fear of getting caught kissing For my sister, my brother, and unity For all the times we tried to change their minds and stale beliefs For the loss of pride, for poverty For the dream of just a normal life for you and me For all the children who were starving for a loaf of bread For the greed of politics and all the lies they spread For all the mass polluted air we breathe for all the litter in the streets and all the dying trees for all the animals who suffer from elimination for all the cats and dogs who love us without no conditions for all the tears that seem to never end for all the images that keep on turning in our heads for a simple smile to last a little while for the future generations fighting for their time for empty promises of heaven in the afterlife for all the imprisonment of beautiful minds for all the babies who were born and for the ones who died for all the times you told the truth and all the times you lied for all the speeches that we heard about a million times for all the shacks and shelters that were sold to make a dime for just a glimpse of a peaceful life for the rising of the sun after an endless night for all the pills we pop just to get some sleep for all mankind and our country for all the boys and girls who never knew equality for woman for life liberty means for, for the sake of. It changes everything. And it's exactly not a psychological strategy. It's Dharma. And it's why, Terry, we originally used the word Dharma. And Dharma means the nature of reality. The best integration of first principles and first values.
just did the the Academy Awards in the United States or in the year 2024 or in the month of March. And Ryan Gosling and Ryan Brother, nicely done, right, did a, a rendition of I'm Just Ken, which was the the great Ken song in Barbie, which brought the house down at the Oscars. And what a tragic moment. And let's move it to post-tragic because the entire point of the song, I'm Just Ken, is... I'm just Ken. I'm not really a hero. And when you read the text of the song, which we did, we did a one mountain, reading a text of the song, you realize that Ken's actually, he's looking for the hero. And, and he looks to his arousal, which is dismissed. And he looks to his, his desire to love, which is dismissed. And then he just falls back into, I'm just Ken which is understood as a silly song. And it's that silly song when, when I read this week and I, I went to look for them, the interpretations of what happened at the Oscar. Why did, why did this bring the house down? And it was, of course, a beautiful moment. It was done well aesthetically, artistically, at least from a performance perspective. But it was actually a tragic moment because... Everyone got together around the silliness of it all. I'm just Ken. Right? I'm just Ken. I'm not just Ken. I am a fucking hero. And Barbie is a hero and Ken is a hero. And the universe desperately needs my service. And I am the unique hero of Her Majesty, Queen of the Universe. I am one for all and all for one. I feel the whole pulsing in me. I can, trembling in my body, I hear the voices of the trillions of unborn who look to our generation to be heroes. That's why we're doing the crossing in Europe. That's why we're doing the mystery school. That's why there's a center. That's why there's a one mountain, to be heroes. Right, We are the heroes of the future. And my friends, friends, Romans and countrymen, lend me your ears. Just for a moment, we have to get over the fear of our grandiosity in order to be grand. Right? like that. And you know, and I know, and this is the secret. It's the furtive secret that lurks deep within. You know, and I know that you're a hero. And you know, and I know that that's actually your true nature. And you know, and I know that your life matters insanely. And you know, and I know, that you were intended, you were intended, you didn't just appear, you were intended by all that is. You're both completely a radical surprise, and yet you were intended by all that is. You know, and I know that you are the chosen one, that you are the one, that you are Paul Atreides, that you are Messiah, that you are the hero. You know, and I know that you are recognized 
by all that is. Recognized, seen. And all of reality is a stage and you are center stage. You are the hero. You know, and I know that you are madly love adored. You're not just loved, you're love adored by all that is. You know, and I know, number five, that only a series of explosions of desire could have brought you into existence. Unique meetings of desire. You know and I know that you're both contingent, radical surprise, and an expression of the deepest, most stunning design. You are desired by all that is. And finally, you know and I know. You know and I know that you are needed by all that is. And what are you needed for? You're needed to be your unique transformation. Your transformation, my transformation. When I speak to you, I'm speaking to me and to we. A mirror in front of me, speaking out loud to you. Your trajectory of transformation is heroic and unique. And from that place, you give your unique gift that's desperately needed by all that is. And sometimes you'll do it as a, right, as a secret agent of Her Majesty, Queen of the Universe. You're going to be her hero. And sometimes you'll do it publicly. And sometimes you'll do it as one of the three musketeers. But that's who you are. It's who I am. It's who we are. We're a league of superheroes. We are the league of superheroes. That's who we are. But, but not fanciful. Not an interesting motivational talk. No, 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 no. No. No, the true nature of who we are. The true nature of we are. Cha, what a crazy, crazy joy to be together. <laughs>